Hi, I'm Bruce Bonebrake. The single most important safety system for your vehicle is the brakes. Losing the ability to stop or slow down almost always results in a collision. So proper care and maintenance is vital to ensure that your brakes are always there when you need them. On this installment of the AutoZone video series, we'll show you how a typical brake system works, ways to care for your car's brakes so they'll last as long as possible, and how to diagnose the most common problems. We're also going to perform a complete system service so you can see what to do when your brakes need repair. Drum style brakes are older technology that's been used for many decades, while disc brakes started becoming commonplace in the 70s. Newer vehicles will have a combination of the two with disc brakes on the front and drum brakes on the rear wheels, or they'll have disc brakes on all four wheels. Now, the most common system used today is a disc brake system. Here's a working example of what that system looks like. Let's just start with some of the parts to this. First off, let's start with our rotor. The rotor is the flat plate that's connected to the wheel. As the rotor spins, you'll see inside of here we have two pads. There's one on the, the outboard and we have the inboard pad. This is the caliper that holds the pads in place. How this works is real simple. Your foot is connected to the master cylinder. That's this part here. It contains the brake fluid. As you press your foot down on the brake pedal, there's a rod inside the master cylinder. It takes fluid out of the reservoir, forces it through this hose and to the caliper. When that fluid's in the caliper, there's a piston inside there. That fluid's on the back side of the piston. It'll apply the piston to the inboard pad. When that happens, the caliper is a sliding type of caliper. It'll slide this way and apply the outboard pad. If you look inside the caliper, we have the inboard and we have the outboard disc pads. As I apply pressure, you'll see the caliper actually applying the disc pads. When I release, they release. Now, the disc pads are one part that's going to just normally wear out. Here's an example of that right here. Now these disc pads, if you look at these, they're all worn out about the same. We're about maybe one quarter of the thickness left from their, when they were new. So they were changed right in time. Now here's another example. These are a lot larger brake. This was off of a medium or heavy duty truck, more than likely a one ton vehicle. Now these have been replaced as well. This is the outboard shoe. This is the inboard shoe. Now if you look at them, there's a drastic difference here in the amount of friction material that's left. The outboard shoe, there's almost no friction material left. And on the inboard shoe, we still have quite a bit of friction material. Well, this is one side. Let's look at the other side. The other side of the same vehicle, because you buy the pads, is set for both, for both wheels, which would be four disc pads. If you look at the outboard pad, we're almost metal to metal. If you look at the inboard pad, we are metal to metal. So this tells me that not only are the brakes worn out, there's a reason that the disc pads wore out unevenly. This might have had a bad caliper. It might have had a bad brake hose. There was something that was causing this brake to drag. So there'd be more opponents needed to be replaced. These are the old brake pads. Now, if you look at this, here's a set of brand new disc pads, and you'll see the amount of pad material that was originally on the pads. Now, you compare that to this one over here, you'll see that there's quite a bit of difference in the pad material. Well, it's normal for the friction material to wear out. This is the part of the brake that's normally is going to wear out and eventually is going to need to be replaced. And that's what we're here to do today, to go ahead and replace the brakes. Let's get started. Something to keep in mind is that the vehicle's front brakes do most of the stopping. On some cars, the rear brakes will do 40% of the work, while on others, they'll do as little as 20%. For that reason, you'll find the front brakes almost always wear out faster than the rear. However, you should always inspect the rear brakes whenever you replace the front brakes. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs we'll be covering today don't require a large, expensive assortment. Basic hand tools are generally all you'll need. In case where a specialty tool is required, be sure to check with AutoZone's Loan a Tool program. They have many specialty tools that can help you complete your job a lot quicker and easier. The first things you'll need are a socket set, brake line wrench, drop light, and a repair manual for your specific vehicle. You may also need screwdrivers or pliers to remove some components. A torque wrench is necessary for tightening nuts and bolts to the correct specifications. When lifting a vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. Be cautious when working with oils and chemicals. 
Many are damaging to the groundwater environment and toxic to people and animals. Never drain or pour chemicals into the ground or sewer systems. Local municipalities and counties offer resources for proper disposal. And always, remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the complete car care series at your local AutoZone store.